messages between two persons, A and B. So before we transition to that new world. So I see on the table there just a second ago the、uh, cousin of our, our friend here watching the video with us. Yeah, well, this is、uh, our duck debugger, DDB50, perhaps one of the most clever things we've ever done. So, what so is what? So, <laughs> and what exactly is this? Is this so? Duck here for? Turns out rubber duck debugging is kind of a thing,、uh, such that some people,、uh, in the absence of other humans to talk to, will pick some inanimate, inanimate object, and somehow it became a rubber duck because、uh, the duck will not judge you, it will not criticize you. You can talk to the duck and explain to the duck, or really anything or anyone, what you think or what you hope your code is actually doing. And it's really meant to be not, not just a catharsis, but also an Opportunity to hear yourself talking through your own code, at which point, hopefully, you have your own self induced aha moment when you realize your code actually doesn't do what you are saying it's supposed to do, or vice versa, you realize that you're describing it incorrectly altogether. Right, because the duck's not going to nod its head and say, okay, yeah, yeah, I get what you're talking about. You can. Right, you know,、so. you have to actually pick every line apart. Yeah, so we've gotten a non zero number of reports of CSFT students who now have these in their dorm rooms saying that they're debugging their code by way of talking it through to a duck. And, you know, it's funny, like, it's a silly thing, and it was really just a way of、uh, coming up with an excuse for having what is an eight foot duck on the screen in this lecture、uh, eventually that AJ kindly snuck onto the stage, or Colton. Uh, but、um, it's kind of true. Like, I've actually found and been frustrated by myself when I've been wrestling with some bug or some design of some computer program, not just for CS50 per se, but more generally. And then finally, I, you know, a, a colleague walks by and I'm going to say, hey, can I bounce some ideas off of you? And it's just so incredibly. Helpful and revealing to like actually talk through something with someone else. I mean, I'm actually feeling this way right now with you. <laughs> like, this, I'm really understanding now what CS50 Explained is all about.、Um, but you hear yourself speak, and it gives you a chance to kind of clean up what you're saying because while it might be all messy in your head, you have to verbalize it and clean it up, at which point you find the faults, right? But this is not the only debugging strategy that we have. We have,、uh, we have sort of the, we have the in person debugging strategy, but we also decided to tackle、um, the debugging problem, which is a long standing problem of how to teach debugging and how to do it effectively、um, with the、uh, Debug 50, the improvement、yeah. over our graphical debugger from 2015. Thanks to Dan Armendariz,、uh, Kareem, who have contributed so much now to this CS50、um, inspired graphical debugger that's built on top of Cloud9, but is GDB specific, the GNU debugger that we've long used. In CS50, albeit in a command line environment. And it's just, it's nice. I mean, GDB is an incredibly powerful tool, but so hard to use for so many people, in part just、and、because. It's hard to teach. Hard to teach, and in part just because it commingles its output with the program's output, and the、uh, commands themselves are pretty arcane. You don't necessarily just see data constantly. You have to type the commands with which to see that data. And just a lot of steps get in the way, a lot of mechanics get in the way of the debugging ideas. And so it's nice. I mean, the CS50 IDE now. Thanks to the debugger, you can just constantly see the current stack frames that,、uh, and the current state of your stack. You can see all of the local variables. You can set breakpoints and step through it. And so it allows you to focus on exactly the same ideas of debugging, but without the textual or syntactic distractions, much like the reasoning behind our use of Scratch initially,、uh, before which we switched to C. Right. Um, we definitely saw a lot, of,、uh, a lot of this at office hours this year. Students really. Getting right into the weeds of debugging and getting, and getting their handle on、um, Debug 50. But there was one other、um, tool that we consciously spent a lot of time working、yeah. on this summer, in particular,、um, Brian Yu and Annie Chen, who spearheaded the effort for. Uh, help 50、yeah. to help make better,、uh, better sense. That was amazing timing.、Really、you said help 50 the moment I said help 50. What can I say? I'm pretty good at this stuff. <laughs>、um, but、um, it gives us an opportunity to really pick apart some of those really arcane error messages. Like Clang is kind of notorious、yeah. for being. Very difficult to sometimes parse yeah, what it's trying to say. Certainly early on when you're new to it all, especially if you've got one bug that triggers a cascade of other bugs, and so you're overwhelmed with the number of error messages on the screen. And you know, I wish we had thought of this earlier because at the end of the day, Help 50 is super simple. It really is just a several dozen regular expressions、yep. that Brian and Annie and others wrote that just look at a student's output and try to pattern match, looking for things that might be arcane, but at least are deterministic, and you can infer from them what the problem might be and offer some rhetorical advice. So it's really meant to be like our Virtual TF、um, that isn't wrong, too. I mean, we've tried to word all of its help output in such a way that we don't tell a student what to do. We ask them、uh, and prompt them with questions. The same kind of questions that we、out. would actually propose in office hours if we saw this happening. Exactly, exactly. And this has been an interesting. 
um, tension and I think discussion that Glenn Holloway and I have had for some time because I've long had a tendency to try to simplify things in students' environment, the IDE, back in the cloud days, the appliance. But like we haven't wanted to have a cloud, uh, a uh, Clang 50 command or Make 50 or wrapper scripts that could absolutely exist, but then really put too much in the way of training wheels on students because in the real world they're not going to have Make 50 and Clang 50 and so forth. Like they're going to have Make and Clang, and we want them to use those standard tools. But Help 50 is really meant to be temporary training wheels, a throwaway, that after a few weeks of familiarity and usage, then they can discard that and move on, and we've not sort of done them a lifelong disservice by teaching them some tool in the wrong way. Right. It's just a tool dedicated to that. But this was a, it was a lot of fun, and a lot of the staff got involved in helping to, to improve this tool, and uh, I think it was one of the most helpful contributions we made yes. um, in the yeah. debugging um, context for students this year. Indeed. So, I mean, we have Debug 50 now, Help 50 now, ePrintf now as well for uh, more homegrown debugging, but all of which provide a pretty good tool chain. You know, a fun fact, uh, uh, these things kind of squeak a little bit. And I've, uh, on multiple occasions, been in faculty meetings this year where I've brought a uh, CS50 duck in my jacket pocket uh, with the intent of giving it to a colleague as a little uh, hello from CS50. <laughs> Invariably, in two of these meetings, it's sitting there in my pocket, very discreetly, no one knows that I got a rubber duck <laughs> hidden in my jacket. And then invariably, I'll just move or something and I'll like move my arm against my, my, my side and, and it's like, who the hell has a rubber duck in the room? <laughs>